So in case you were wondering, and somebody was wondering, that's why I'm making this video, how does that UG M708 tablet that we reviewed in the last video, how does it hold up in Critter? I completely forgot about this. Critter is a popular choice for beginners for two reasons. One is that it's really good, and two, it's completely free. So let's get this tablet back on the table and do the thing. Okay, and the thing is, of course, the usual set of line tests here in Critter. First thing I want to do is check my pressure response. So with my brush set to change size with pressure, let's go really light, a bit heavier. And the transition between the two is pretty smooth. Quite like that. If we change over to the opacity round brush, where the opacity is going to change depending on how much pressure I'm applying. Same thing here from light to dark, and back, really smooth. Quite happy with that. So I don't anticipate that we're going to have any other problems, but let's check a few other things. On that note of pressure, let's see about doing some spirals. I'm going to go from light to heavy, and heavy to light. This is where I sometimes have a bit of a problem, and it might just be more my pen control, but going from heavy back into light, sometimes the jump between uh, that heavy pressure down to a light one, it can be a, a quite a dramatic jump. But here it looks fine to me. We'll do that again. Yeah, it transitions quite nicely. If we try and keep a consistent pressure, looks good. It looks good. No weird fluctuations in the size of my brush there. With quick lines, I haven't noticed any excessive shoestringing or weird dots or hooks at the end of my lines. Zoom in a little bit. All looks pretty, pretty normal, pretty expected behavior. So I'm happy with that. But it's with slow angled lines that the real test happens. So I'm going to grab my, my ruler here next to me and we're testing to see if there's any mechanical wave and the best thing to do here, I'm going to make sure there's no smoothing active. I'm going to turn off the pressure response for my brush so that the line weight stays the same. And I know that with my desk setup, I'm not going to get a line that doesn't have wobble in it because I'm not sitting at the best height on this table. So let's go. Yeah, so there might be the slightest bit of jump there. That can be a little bit because of movement in my hand still, even with the ruler where the pen sort of adjusts around a little bit. Uh, but if you do notice a little bit of a little bit of wobble, and I wouldn't even count this as as an issue. This is pretty standard pretty much every time I test a pen. I get that slight little bit as my hand shifts as I move along the ruler. Uh, but you can add a touch of smoothing so that when you're drawing at a normal pace you're less likely to notice uh, those lines. Those wobbles in your line rather. When it comes to dots, I've found that it seems to pick up pretty much every dot. So the the response rate there is good, it's picking up everything. Okay, so that covers that part, but I'm a painter, so let's paint something. Nothing fancy, just a simple gold sphere study, something that I can pull from for that panda painting you might have seen in the review video. And for the sake of efficiency, I'm just gonna voice over this part rather than talk while I paint. Let's dive in. So the first thing I'm gonna do is pull up my reference. I'm using PureRef for this. You can pin as many images as you like to this infinite board really quite handy. And then with my circle selection tool, I'm just going to create a perfect circle here. And then with a nice textural brush, I'm going to add in just a warm mid-tone orange for the base of this golden orb. I've decided that my lighting situation is going to be sort of warm light coming from the top left, 
with my shadows being a bit cooler. And looking at the reference image here, those shadow areas seem to have a bit of green in them. So I'm squinting my eyes just looking for those different patches and variations of, of color. To get a more green look, I'm really just putting down a more desaturated uh, gray next to these warm oranges. It give, gives a bit of a, a look of green. When it comes to the light, you want to put down a bit of a stronger color first before going straight to uh, a really strong highlight. It really brings it out much more and gives a better sense of the color of the surface, but also of the light. Then using the same brush, scaled up much bigger, I'm just going to stamp down a little bit of a uh, little bit of texture, capture some of the the shape information from the brush itself to add a kind of distressed weathered look to to the metal. But I've done this on a separate layer so that I can easily uh, erase a bit of it back where I don't need it to be as strong. I still want that to follow the value structure, but some areas are going to be a little bit darker than others. Then to add a little something more here, I decided to add this kind of carving into it, a little cavity that runs all the way around. And the interesting thing with this is trying to, again, keep to that same value structure. The light on the edges before going into the cavity aren't going to be the same value all the way around. It's going to depend where where they are in relation to the light source. But before they go down, there is that that slightly lighter edge. Of course, there's going to be a little bit of bounce light as well from, from the surface underneath, and that's why we've got it, uh, the value on the bottom right being a little bit lighter, capturing some of that reflected light. Just to make it look like more of an orb in space, I'll add a little shadow underneath. And that's about it for this exercise, something that you can do no matter what software you're in, it's helpful if you have a bit of a textured brush, but not absolutely necessary. With that out of the way, we can jump back into the main painting. So there you have it. Based on that really brief test, I would say that the UG M708 works perfectly in Critter. So if you are considering this tablet, now you know you've got some solid software to go along with it. Just head over to Critter.org. You can download it for free, but consider donating to support further development of the software or you can buy it on Steam. That's all from me in this one. I'll chat to you guys again soon. Happy painting.